resistance in the era of segregation. In Louisville, the turning point in the struggle for freedom was the founding of the local NAACP in 1914. The branch's first major victory was the Buchanan v. Warley case, which struck an early blow against legal segregation in that 1917 ruling. The U.S. Supreme Court declared unconstitutional a Louisville ordinance requiring housing segregation, effectively turning the tide on enshrining segregation into the law. While court action laid a foundation for later successes, more often in this period, black citizens used their voting power to challenge restrictions against them and to demand equal access to civic resources. In 1921, disgruntled with both major political parties, a group of black leaders formed the Lincoln Independent Party, LIP, and ran for election to a number of offices. Although they, they suffered personal harassment and failed to win at the polls, uh, the LIP, the Lincoln Independent Party, an independent party in 1921, succeeded in pressuring the Republican administration to open both police and fire department jobs to blacks. So again, an independent movement pressuring one of the major parties to do what they should be doing, which is the success of a third party candidate seats for the major candidates to adopt their platform. In 1925, black leaders again marshaled a political party to win a promise of more funding for higher education for local African Americans. In 1931, that promise was fulfilled when the Louisville Municipal College, LMC, a branch of the University of Louisville for black students, opens its doors on the grounds of the former Simmons University. During its brief two-decade existence, LMC provided training for the next generation of black leaders and a social and cultural community resource. Black voting power in the Depression decade led to the election of Charles Anderson in 1935 to represent the 42nd District in the Kentucky General Assembly, the first black elected state representative in the South since Reconstruction. The first black elected state representative in the South since Reconstruction. So that's major in Kentucky. The first black elected state representative in the South was elected. The Depression decade mobilized many black and white to pull together and act against widespread economic black leaders associated the struggle against fascism abroad with the fight for interracial democracy at home and stepped up their public pressure against discrimination in employment and education.